Thank you. So this is um, a piece of a larger project. Uh, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with The Forge, uh, it was a, an online uh, discussion site for the player. What is the player interested in uh, achieving as a result of play, or as an outcome of play, and um, how do we get that, right? And so um, that's, uh, uh, that, that's this piece, right? So it's, it's looking at um, a discussion thread about actual play from a rhetorical perspective. Uh, and so um, the uh, uh, so this this slide talks about a sort of an overview of uh, what this piece of the project is, right? It sort of says uh, I'm going to take a look at an actual play thread from a rhetorical perspective with uh, uh, rhetoric understood to be that part of the field of communication that's interested in um, uh, decision making or choice under conditions of uncertainty, right? It assumes that uh, the, the rhetor that is the communicator, interlocutor, uh, is an intentional subject uh, who is communicating for some purpose and that understanding that purpose or that intentionality is uh, a, an important part of uh, assessing or understanding the act of communication in and of itself. Um, and so there's lots of different ways of looking at, at uh, rhetoric or a lot of different rhetorical perspectives that one can adopt, um, uh, moving from you know, sort of classical neo-Aristotelian uh, uh, ideas where it's your, what you're interested in is how do you as a speaker uh, impose or um, uh, uh, compel acceptance of your ideas on the part of the audience to a more dialogic perspective, which is interested in how people reach mutual understanding, mutual ways of engaging with each other uh, in a uh, more invitational uh, kind of, uh, kind of uh, rhetoric. The, um, uh, the, the rest of this presentation then is just looking at one thread, right? one discussion site, uh, or one uh, discussion uh, at the forge, uh, and trying to unpack it or understand it as, uh, as an instance of rhetoric, right? as an instance of uh, an attempt to reach some sort of mutuality or mutual understanding via dialogic means. Uh, and so in general, the method that uh, a rhetorical analyst employs is uh, orienting oneself and, and the readership uh, to a text, right? Figuring out what is this text, what are its boundaries, uh, um, what constitutes it. Um, trying to reconstruct the arguments within that text and then assessing it in terms of the rhetorical intentionality of the participants. And, and assessing the rhetorical intentionality of the participants is a very sort of broad way of saying, making some sort of judgment about it. That judgment could be uh, uh, ethical, it could be um, instrumental, that's how effective was it, or it could be you know, how um, responsible is it, or how in tune with uh, um, a, pers a particular persona that the that the speaker is trying to project, right? So there's lots of different ways of assessing rhetorical intentionality. Um, and, uh, and in this case, uh, the question is, to what extent does the um, rhetorical intentionality that's displayed say something about the meaning of or the importance of actual play at the forge? So um, just a little bit about this thread. Uh, it, you know, and actually, let me I'll move forward. Um, so that's a key point. So uh, this, this diagram is an attempt to map a one conversation at the Forge that took place over a couple of weeks uh, involving uh, maybe nine or so different participants, but only three, as you see, are major participants. And so uh, the numbers indicate the point at the order in which the different participants entered into the conversation, the size of the box or uh, the node that represents them indicates the, the, the amount that they contributed to the conversation, and the um, arrows uh, indicate who followed whom, right? Whoever followed whom. So looking at this, you can see the conversation begins with Buzz, who comes off the forge and says, hey, um, I'm playing a lot of champions, which for those of you who don't know, is a um, uh, rules heavy, um, number crunching, superhero, lots of dice rolling, uh, superhero game. Uh, he said, well, you know, so um, I've been playing a lot of champions, and I'm, I'm not super happy with my champions game. Um, I'm wondering if these forge theory ideas can help me understand. Does anyone, can anyone help me? Right? He's followed by Judd, right? Judd who says something like, um, and Judd contributes maybe once or twice, uh, no, uh, just once, 
Uh, and so something like, uh, oh, you don't need that theory, don't worry about that theory, uh, you can just sort of tell us about your actual play and, that's, and that'll be good. Um, Judd is followed by Ron who says, well, actually, actually the theory is really important. I have about an hour of lecture that um, you might want to hear, or we can have a conversation about it. And so the first, you need to tell me about your actual play experience and then we can get into it. And then Buzz responds, and you can see the thickness of that arrow indicates that there's a lot of back and forth between Buzz and Ron, right? They talk a lot. <laughs> Right? Um, and then, so Ron's the third, and then fourth, and there's, you see four, five, and six, there's lots of little comments as, um, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, supportive comments, like, oh, welcome to the Fords, this is good stuff, uh, you should be interested in this, uh, before uh, the conversation uh, between Ron and Buzz takes off in earnest, and that conversation is about, tell me more about your actual play, tell me, tell me what, uh, uh, how you feel about this, uh, correcting, challenging under some circumstances, but it's an attempt to elicit Buzz's sense of what, what the source of his dis dissatisfaction is with play. Uh, at a certain point, Storm jumps in and says, oh no, this is your problem, this is how you need to fix it. Uh, which uh, Ron uh, sort of does a very, uh, does sort of an interesting sort of redirection where he sort of enlists him as an expert colleague. Oh yes, Storm, you know a lot about champions so I'm interested in your input, but let's, this is about Buzz. Buzz's group may be different than yours, so let's you know, take this a little more slow. Um, there's uh, some input from uh, other contributors at this point, uh, all of which is, uh, or both, both those contributions, the eight and nine, Brandon and Caldas, uh, are supportive of, uh, oh yes, this conversation has been very interesting, we want to hear more, um, and then it sort of wraps up in a three-way conversation between Buzz, Ron, and Storm, where Ron says, make characters for this game, and I will show you what I would have done as a GM to make them better, to illustrate these techniques that I've been talking about in this previous sort of conversation. Right? So now, um, I've mapped on to this structure the content, right? but there's a lot that's visible just from this structure. Right? You can sort of see uh, who the major participants are, uh, you can say who's, who's leading, who's following, and it sort of gives us a sense of what the boundaries of the text are, the number of participants and the important sort of, uh, uh, the important contributors to the conversation. Move forward, where it, that's sort of where it wraps up. Um, but the important points are that um, there's a lot of um, effort on the part of Ron uh, before making any sort of diagnosis using theoretical concepts to elicit <coughs> this discussion of what is play like for you? What is, what is the experience of play like? Uh, what, 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 what were your expectations? And how are those expectations not being met? And then there's a, a move uh, in the, in, at the end of the conversation towards, okay, let me show you how I would do it that I think would produce the kind of play that you're interested in. Right? And so, um, and so the, the, in terms of assessing sort of rhetorical intentionality, what emerges in kind of an interesting way is that um, this, is, this mode of reconstructing play is phenomenological rather than, uh, rather than anything else. And, and so we can contrast that with other communities' modes of reconstructing play, right? The very sort of traditional, let me tell you about my character, right? Which you'll notice is not almost, there's nothing there about how you're feeling about that or, or what's happening inside your head as you're playing. Uh, in that sort of traditional, let me tell you about my character. It's also different from um, uh, what I know many LARP communities, especially the Nordic community, it's, it's Pixar, it didn't happen, right? It's document, the, the move towards documentation uh, is about, uh, you know, let, let's uh, reconstruct this experience of play uh, through pictures and through accounts of what, how it was designed and how, how, what happened, rather than, rather than necessarily being intensely focused on the interior experience uh, of play. Um, this second bullet, um, I would rewrite that because uh, I'm not sure what exactly uh, it means. Uh, but, um, but what I'm trying to get at is this notion that it's intensely focused on this sort of meta-communicative experience, right? So the actual play thread is about uh, focusing on being honest with the people that you're talking to about what you're seeking from play and how. Um, how the kind of play that you engage in gets you what you're interested in. So to wrap up, conclusion, right? So, so the thing that I like, or the thing that I think is interesting about the um, actual play uh, threads at the forge is that it amounts to a kind of 
phenomenological dialogue. Right? We're interested in engaging with each other in order to get a sense of what's going on in our heads and how that, uh, that experience uh, can be shaped by play routines and play practices in order to, um, in order to make play better. Um, I also want to point to the, the skill that it requires, the discursive or metacommunicative skill that it requires in order to uh, make that happen. Right? It's easy for these things to run off the rails and someone says, oh, I know the answer. I stormed it. Uh, and then it takes a lot to sort of rein that in and look at it. Um, and so, I mean, I recognize that there are case study limitations to this, uh, to this approach, right? And so uh, it would be better to look at more instances and see what sort of other different examples uh, we can have. But uh, I think it's a rich site for looking at actual play and looking for ways we talk about play. And it can supplement a sort of more traditional frame analytic approach to understanding role playing that are, that are fairly common within role playing studies. So that's this little piece. Um, I should say, uh, since um, Unimus plugged uh, SMG and uh, Evan plugged um, Analog Game Studies, the International Journal of Role Playing is also a site <laughs> for you to submit to. Uh, and uh, the, the 2015 volume should be online and ready any day now. We're really, we're really, we're really close. Uh, and uh, so we're soliciting uh, submissions for uh, the 2016 volume, which um, uh, in, the, in the ecology of role-playing game studies, this is the peer-reviewed, serious, scholarly source. Hey, now. Yes, yes. <laughs> what yeah. about no, the no, companion no. book? <laughs> what I, all I meant, it, it, um, of the three that were mentioned, okay. right? I should say, right? Uh, Never mind, disregard what I just said. Also, right. those papers, this, also this paper is actually in last year's companion book if yeah, you want to read it. Yeah, the big, the big, this like, this, there's more there. All right, but I'm out of time, so thank you very much, uh, and I appreciate your attention.